technology finds a wonderful bedfellow in the military. That marriage has given birth to a wealth of advancements in weaponry and strategy, perhaps most dramatically seen in the development of the military drone plane. Our guest, Seton Hall University Professor Jenny Brooke Condon, is here to discuss the growing use of drones in what's been termed America's secret killing program. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we've, we're hearing a lot of this uh, talk about the use of drones and whether it's legal and whether it's proper. Uh, what's your take on that? I, I'm sure you must be talking with some of your other uh, uh, compatriots in the, in the legal community. I, I think there's a, a number of very serious concerns that we as a citizenry and that members of Congress need to be focused and concerned about. The first is that the executive is engaging unilaterally in the decision to uh, kill individuals, not only in Afghanistan, but far from any theater of war, and also to exercise that authority to kill U.S. citizens. Now, is there proof that U.S. citizens are being targeted? The uh, president himself has acknowledged that uh, one, on, on the public record, that one U.S. citizen um, suspected terrorist Anwar al-Waliki was killed in Yemen in September of 2011, and there's public reports that his son was killed two weeks later and another uh, suspected terrorist. But now we are talking about people who are terrorists, though. Uh, they're suspected terrorists, and, and while there may be uh, substantial reason that these, these uh, individuals pose a threat, it is significant that the, the uh, president is exercising this authority without any review by any court and without providing individuals due process of law. I think the other serious issue here is the secrecy surrounding the program. Because of the extraordinary secrecy that the administration, administration is insisting upon, we don't have any information about what guidelines, what criteria, even what legal authorizations uh, the administration is relying on, what legal theories they're relying on to engage in this authority. And because of that, we not only know what the legal basis is, we don't know how this authority is being implemented, now, what the human costs are. Perhaps two sides of this argument. Uh, those, there are those who will argue that, well, this is military stuff. We can't just put everything out there and ask questions and let the public weigh in while our adversaries overseas are listening, uh, that perhaps there are things the military does that are secretive. Um, and the other side of the drone technology is it does take pilots out of harm's way. Um, is there a middle ground there in your estimation? Well, I think uh, one reason for a particular concern about the way this technology is being implemented is that it's not being used by the conventional military. It's being used by agencies like the CIA and by a division within the military, the Joint Special Operations Command, which we know very little about and operates um, outside of many of the, the legal requirements and um, adherence to the laws of war that the conventional military um, does. And for those reasons, while um, you know, we, we might expect that the military, um, given their experience in war and their development of really a culture of accountability and um, their relationship to law, that um, the military is in, entitled to a certain amount of secrecy, but when it engages in, in strikes that result in, for example, the deaths of civilians, the military is very aggressive about investigating, about making sure the public knows what went wrong, and in some cases even providing um, amends to, to civilians who are impacted. In this case, uh, there's reason to think that that's not happening with the CIA. There, there is a big debate among generals, and we, we've seen this come up over the last few years, over how the uh, the, the change from conventional war tactics to unconventional war tactics because of the unconventional war being waged on Americans. Uh, and I wondered, is that something that you weigh into the legal argument when you talk about, is this proper? Absolutely, because again, these um, the the use of this authority is not only taking place in hot battlefields and, and theaters of war, but is being used in places like uh, Yemen in Somalia, where, where we are not at war with those countries, and uh, we don't know what the criteria. Um, is for the administration to target an individual. We don't know what precautions, if any, the administration is taking to ensure that civilians are not unnecessarily impacted by Real the quick, use of technology. Real quick, what would you like to see happen? I think uh, one step is for Congress um, to exercise its authority to find out more about th this program. I think that the administration um, as opposed to selectively disclosing information that is uh, politically advantageous to it, should make a full accounting to the American public about uh, w why it's engaging in this authority, what criteria it uses to target individuals, and what happens when civilians are harmed. And well, it's certainly been the, the subject of conversation in Washington. We haven't heard the last of it, but thanks for coming on and uh, sharing a little insight on uh, what's going on within that conversation. My pleasure.